Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time to the Fireside Chapel at St. Henry Catholic Church in Gresham, Oregon. Our reader is Marcy, our musicians, Michelle and Barbara, and uh, the Do Everything sacristan and videographer is Jim. Let us now give glory and praise to God with our opening song. See how the Lord turned his heart spirit and call upon the Lord's loving mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory, 
hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I could not endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Romans. I urge 
you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is in the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Alleluia verse from Paul's letters to the Ephesians, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call that we may know what is the hope. That's why St. Peter is such a great model and leader for the church. He had to keep learning what is the hope that belongs to his call. Just a moment before, Jesus had asked the disciples 
who do you say that I am? Simon spoke up. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was impressed. He said, well, it was the Holy Spirit that revealed that to you. And therefore, you will no longer be called Simon, you will be called Peter, for you are the rock on whom I will build my church. And then we come to a stunning reversal today. St. Peter, maybe some call him the waffler. Jesus was describing to the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer and die at the hands of the elders and be raised on the third day. Peter spoke up, not while I'm alive, we're going to protect you. You won't suffer that fate. And then he heard the stunning reversal from Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Peter continued to learn what is the hope that belongs to his call. We too are the same way. That stunning reversal. It's tempting because of how Jesus responds to us so clearly if we listen. It's tempting to keep Jesus at arm's length. Don't get too close. Because he may ask too much of me. He may ask too much of me. There's always a cost to discipleship. Jesus asks us to be all in. Remember that great line, I would rather you be hot or cold, but not lukewarm. I will spit you out. Jesus wants us all in. Not straddling the fence. That way we'll come to know the joy that is Jesus Christ and his mercy. Yes, even the joy that comes from the cross. Because we Christians know at the end there's an illuminating horizon for those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to holiness, and yet, Paul describes in Romans, I urge you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Do not conform to this age, to the world, to society. Be transformed that you may know the will of God. We're called the holiness. And yet some will say, but Father, times have changed. Why doesn't the church measure up to the times? It's out of sync. Society that strongly influences us, this age, it's easy to think as the world thinks. And say, I'm only doing what is perfectly acceptable in today's society. With the same words an elderly person explained to me and explained away his or her living condition. A young man justified his wild lifestyle. An abuser even justifies his actions. And then there's always those who justify hedonism. Pleasure instead of the good life Jesus offers. <clears throat> what follows is disrespect for others, disrespect for even our country when it should be in God we trust, and yes, disrespect for life. I recently heard a wonderful chat by a sister Deidre Byrne, 
a pro-life talk. She was a colonel in the army and was an MD. She was stationed for 20 years either in Afghanistan or in Egypt doing triage and working in a mass unit and in hospitals. She saw a lot, a lot of suffering. When she finished her tour of duty, she was called by the Spirit to join the convent in a life of prayer. As she spoke about pro-life, she said, I'm just not pro-life. I'm pro-eternal life. That's called being all in and keeping it in perspective. But yet there are many who want to keep Jesus at arm's length. At arm's length, we don't have to live up to all of those expectations that Jesus has. We don't have to put up with the consequences of carrying our cross. Peter always learning more and more from his mistakes and growing in his faith and his hope. The great legend I love about St. Peter is when the persecution in Rome was getting especially hot and the martyr numbers were rising, he decided to flee Rome and was walking down the Appian Way. Coming the other way, he saw Jesus Christ coming toward him. He asked the Lord, Quo Vadis, where are you going? And Jesus says, I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. Peter turned around, understood, went back to Rome, and his time came to be crucified he said, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. Turn me upside down. St. Augustine, we just celebrated last Friday. He was one that was swayed by the age, by society and by the world. He fled his home and started enjoying the wild life even had a child out of wedlock. But God sent two chasers after him. His mother, St. Monica, trying to draw him to accept Jesus Christ. And then St. Augustine was given another chaser, Bishop St. Ambrose. Between the two of them, he finally heard the voice of Jesus Christ. He then trimmed his lamp with oil, faith, and he became a bright star in the church, even to the present age. Who is chasing us down? Who has God assigned to chase us down? And maybe, are you one of the chasers? Parents are always that way called to do what St. Monica and Bishop St. Ambrose did. We need to understand what Jesus is asking of us. The meaning of the cross isn't all about distasteful suffering. It's about finding joy and meaning and mercy in our life. That's what we count on from Jesus Christ. The words of St. Columban, the great 13th century Irish saint. He said, show me my heart's desire, O Lord, for I am wounded by your love. And what he meant by that is, it is burning within me for me to proclaim the message. That's basically what Jeremiah the prophet writes today. God, you have duped me, and I let myself be duped.
The word God came to me. I'm not able to even mention him or speak his name. Then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart. I grow weary of holding it in. I cannot endure it. Wow. That's the kind of thing that Peter learned and that we are to learn in our short life on this earth. Even if we wanted to ignore him, we cannot. We are his. So we close with what is ultimately our invitation. Psalm 84. Better one day in your house, O Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. And we close as we started. What we read in the Alleluia verse. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of my heart that I may know what is the hope that belongs to my call. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God loves us without limit or end, with boundless compassion and mercy. Let us now pray for the strength to trust in his love and share his spirit. That the church leaders give witness to the hope of God's presence ever in our midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders in government hear the cries of the people and take action against injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we remember the victims of recent fires and hurricanes and respond generously to the needs of our suffering brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are enslaved by addiction may find courage to seek the Lord's help to become whole and healthy again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in the arms of their Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves gathered here today in worship, for our special needs and intentions. We pray for our parishioners who are in hospice care, for those who are anticipating surgery this week, and for those who are recovering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all joys, your Son gave his life for your sake. Make us love your mercy more than earthly life, and grant what we ask. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. Through this mystery of water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be our prayer. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Sisters and brothers, we pray together that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, for the praise and glory of the name, for our good and good of all the Church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alexander and Peter our bishops, with all the clergy and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with Peter and the Blessed Apostles, with Augustine and Columban and Monica and Ambrose and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And Let us share a sign of peace. of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go in peace to give glory and praise to God. Praise to God.